Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. If you're new around here, subscribe, get involved in the comment section down below and hit that like button. Let's get this episode booming on YouTube algorithm. Um, your support has been massive. Your support for my match reaction against Forest is phenomenal. The amount of comments that have came in on that video is absolutely brilliant. You're all liking each other's comments. You're all getting involved with each other's comments as well. So thank you very, very much uh, for getting involved. And, you know, you were very complimentary of, of me. But um, before I start, I've, I've been reading this book, Villa Fans. It's called In The Mixer. Now, a bit about it. Basically, it's the story of Premier League tactics from Route 1 to Force 9. Now, I'm nearly at the end, but I'm really struggling to find the chapter about moments of magic. Um, and it's just simply not in here. So I, I don't know where, where that is in this book, but um, apparently it's not a top tactic. So good book, though. Right. So I've said enough about uh, Villa at the minute. I, I want to hear Justin's thoughts on it. So we'll kick it off then with... Talk about Forest then, bit about the Forest, and then we'll, um, we'll go on to we'll go on to Gerard and, and Co. Um, it was a bitterly disappointing evening, wasn't it? You and me went. I met you there. And fo football for me should be an escapism, shouldn't it? This is this is why we all go. This is why we all love it. We've attached ourselves to to Villa. We love going. Get you out the daily drudge, doesn't it? And. We were really looking forward to last night. A, because we thought that you could finally break your uh, your, your streak of not seeing us win away. And B, because I genuinely thought this last night was going to be the start of hopefully off the back of three, not convincing performances, but three positive results. Can I even say that? I think the Man City one definitely was a positive result. Maybe the other two wasn't that positive, but we didn't lose. We're keeping reasonably clean, you know, not conceding loads of goals. I was thinking if we can go and smash them last night, if we go and smash Forest, things would look a lot rosier. We were ninth in the league. And it just it was awful. I can't I can't lie. You know, we've been doing this podcast a long time now. We 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 got the promotion under Dino and, and unfortunately we went through the the sadness of losing Dino. So we've we've been we've now covered a managerial departure, haven't we, from Villa? And this feels like it's going that way now. I, th I don't think there's any doubt about it. But just on the Forest game, it was... I, I don't know about you, but we was obviously talking a lot last night. The fan, the fans were very quiet, weren't they? For an away end... Now, Villa fans, generally speaking, are buzzing in an away end. There's, there's, there's lots of noise singing throughout. The atmosphere's always good. But there was nothing. The apathy... I think that's the word for me. The apathy now amongst the fan base speaks volumes. I really think it does. I think before the game, the fans were turning. Now they are massively turning. And how can you... Is there any way of back now for Steven Gerrard? And, and the answer has got to be no, really. Yes, you could go and smash Chelsea. Is that going to happen? No. And then go on a run? No. But, I mean, Steve Cooper, very, very simply last night, found us out. This is, and I'm not being horrible to, um, do you want to do that statistic, statistic well, I mean, first? I, I put a yeah. little tweet out this morning, and I just wanted to gauge. I just wanted to gauge, because when I was at the game yesterday, before the game, everybody I spoke to was Gerard out. Everybody. There wasn't anybody that I spoke to that was saying they want to keep him. So that was, you know, that was before the game. So this morning, I just thought, once I'd done my episode, I wanted to gauge where everybody was. So I just put Stephen Gerrard in or out, right? 93% of people have put out. 7%, obviously, Blue Noses, Baggies fans, Wolves fans have put in. And now that's from 1,010 fans, which is a pretty big number, isn't it, Justin? Yeah, you know, that, that's I a mean, pretty no, big number. It's no Brexit vote, is it? 49-51, it's, it's categorical. And this is what I was leaning into. 
I think pre-match, I think there was a hardcore that that didn't weren't going to have him. I think there was a certain percentage that didn't want him maybe from the start. So you're never going to turn them around. And and and, and the way we've gone has just strengthened their vote. And then you've got the floaters that that weren't that sure but were willing to give him a go. And they, they, he's lost all them now. And then you've got the ones that just pray that he can be, you know, he can be the man. They've gone now. And I think last night was the tipping point. We didn't lose the game, but but not getting a result away at Forest is, is, is catastrophe, I think, for him. I really think that was his chance last night to put a really good performance out, show that, you know, his team can play a style and, and a way of exciting the fans. And as I was saying before he did that stat, Steve Cooper, it was the most basic of tactics last night. He just said, whenever Villa have got the ball, two banks of a four and a five will leave one up top just in case we get a quick break. Don't bother engaging them. There's no point. Unless they come over the halfway line and as soon as they hit the box, maybe you can start engaging. There was no press. There was a mild press, shall we call it. You know, they, they maybe made a, a, an inference that they were going to engage at some point. They didn't have to. They just sat off us. And we were, we were just, there was nothing. We, we clueless. And I still look at the players that we've got at our disposal, even with the injuries we carry at the moment. And the fact we created two chances last night, two shots on goal in 90 minutes when I, I watched a Leicester team that had been lost six on the bounce and were basically on the verge of sacking their manager, absolutely destroy them the week before. And that'll happen next week. I'll, I'll guarantee you, Wolves. I'll be gobsmacked if Wolves don't beat them on Saturday. And Wolves are in, the Wolves have lost the manager and they're in disarray. They've got players missing. Just see how Wolves attack it. They'll look at that as a chance to get their season up and running, which is what we should have done last night. And the fact our manager couldn't do that, you know, alarm bells were obviously ringing well before last night, but, but alarm bells rang for me last night. And I'm like you, Luke, and like a lot of fans, I try and stay very level-headed about these things. He, he he looks like he hasn't and he won't ever have an idea of how to get the best out of this current squad of players. You know, you can argue all day long about injuries and, and yes, that has hampered him. His two big summer signings haven't have, have injured. The Coutinho risk, I suppose it was a risk. We said it at the time when we signed him. At his age and the fact he hadn't played much, can he re- replicate the the highlight of you know the highest points of his career? You'd have to say no. I still think he carries quality. I th- still think on the ball there's flashes of it, but he's not doing enough in a game. And I think the players have to take a bit of responsibility of it as well. There's more than enough quality within each of those players that were put out last night to to do something to to, to create something. And the only thing you can surmise is they're just not buying into. It. They don't. They don't get what he's trying to do. We don't get it watching it. They don't seem to get it playing it. You know, there was times where where our midfielders were picking the ball up, turning, looking, and nothing on. You know, where's the runner? You know, you know I, I mean, I was right by that corner flag. I was right by. I had a great little view as well, and I was just like, like. I don't know. If anyone wants to see me at the games, I do like to sing. I do like to get involved. I like to get stuck into it a bit. But even I'm just, I'm just stood there and I'm just like, I I just don't know what I'm watching. I'm like yeah. numb. I'm absolutely numb watching them at the minute. Like, I just stand there like thinking, what is going on? Like This is what I'm saying. The apathy I, I, I is don't setting. Know, I don't know where we're going and when we go out wide and it comes back and... Oh, it's absolutely, absolutely we've, terrible. We've tried for 12 months now to, to decipher the Gerard way, whatever it is, and we're 12 months in and we still don't know. We've picked we've picked little attributes that he tries to, the full-backs bombing on, the, the, the two eights settling, you know, covering and all this. We were too narrow. The, the front three was so narrow. The two tens didn't work. Um. There was lots that just didn't work last night. And the worry is, and, and another big point with the Steve Gerrard era, 
is he doesn't have a plan B or a plan C. Now, he, he, there was talk before last night's game that there was going to be a big tactical change. Maybe, you know, rumours of a maybe three at the back, five at the back, even giving the wing backs even more of a, a, a sort of license to get forward and, and do something different. And now there's talk again on on Sunday that's going to happen that, that he's, he's had enough and he's going to change it. But he should he should have been more aware of where we are and where we've been for such a long time now that it should have changed before now. It's too late now. What what can he do in a week to change what's gone on in a year? Nothing, because whatever he does now is just going to be seen as panic, as panic stations. Like it was in the last ten minutes last night, you know, Steve Bruce tactic that was stick all your forwards on and hope for the best. It was the uh, even Lambert against Bradford. Yeah, just you know, uh, what forwards have we got? I, I mean, we I, I, looked... I, I hate that's one of my biggest bugbears in football when a manager just starts chucking on the strikers, just lumping you know, everyone up front. When, yeah. when that happens, you know it. You know you're done for. I mean, even Dino did it last game against Southampton. He, he chucked Davis on. He, I don't know who he took else he chucked on. Must have been Watkins or whoever. And it was just oh, it's 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 terrible, absolutely terrible. I think the not. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying the owners are complicit. They're not complicit at all. Complicit in what's gone on because they bought the club, and we had a great ride with them and Smith. You know, and Perslow. You know, nobody was calling Christian Perslow out when when we got promoted. You know, no. There's none of that. Obviously, when things turn, you're looking for someone to blame, aren't you? Who can you blame for this going on? Manages your first port of call. I've seen people now, well, yeah, Christian Perslow has hung his hat on Stephen Gerrard. They they decided to get rid of Dean Smith because he wasn't progressing. And for me, the the, the Gerrard, I think we all knew at the time it was a it was a vanity thing for for, for Perslow. He loved him at Liverpool, and he wasn't going to move heaven and earth to get him in. I feel now that the owners have got to now step in. Maybe have to step in over Christian Perslow. Yeah, and yeah say, I, like you made a good point there. For me, this <laughs> this prop, this where we're at now is a, not a Christian Perslow thing. No, it is NSWE. It's They're owners. the ones now that yeah. take control of this situation, and whoever's heads on the chopping block, it's on them. You know, and. We'll start off with Gerard then. So, wh- where are we at then? What what are you saying? Wh- where are your thoughts like? I think it's nigh and impossible for him to turn this around. I think he would need a run of of, of results that just seem beyond us, just totally beyond us at the moment. I mean, we're playing Chelsea on Sunday, who have just taken on Potter. That's that they're sort of almost. Admitting it's going to be a long-term project to get to get the way he wants to play, but you're already seeing the, the the shoot starting to come through. Of you know, obviously with the quality they possess in the squad, you know, coaching wise, he, he's, he's a good coach. So you would think that that's not going that's going to happen sooner rather than later. And and and, it, and as as Cooper did last night, you know, it doesn't take much to find Villa out these days. We're not. It's not like we're a we're a jigsaw puzzle that, that you can't you know Rubik's cube you can't solve. It's pretty straightforward, you know. We're blunt up front and we're okay at the back. We don't create chances. There was a stat I read, uh, I heard last night. Uh, seven times out of the nine games this season, we've had an xG of under one. Now that's horrendous, and I mean we haven't played Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool. No, we haven't played nine of the best teams in the country. We've played Bournemouth, we've played Southampton, we've played Leeds, we've played West Ham that were in poor form, we've played Forest that were in poor form. We've played a lot of teams that have been that were in poor form, and we've barely been able to like love on any of them, attacking wise. So that's the managers. That's solely the manager's remit, isn't it? Work on them in the training ground, work out a system, a style that suits the players you've got. If you haven't got those players, you buy them in the transfer market. He's had a couple of transfer windows. He's bought, you know, pretty much, you would think anybody who's wanted, he's got in. He seems pretty happy with who he's had in. And the two injuries really haven't really, haven't affected the, the top end of the pitch because we signed a defensive midfielder in the centre-half. And arguably, that's, 
the back line's been as solid as anything this season. Without those two, in, you know, we haven't looked like conceding two, three, four goals a game. What they didn't do in the summer was address the forward line and the and the attacking options. You know, they saw enough of Coutinho last season to decide that it was worth the punt. And at the time, I thought for the, for the money, it, it wasn't a bad a bad deal. I, you know, I still think that maybe under a new manager, you you could see Coutinho return to a much better form and be more of a, an impact player that, than the, he's currently showing. Yeah, but most of it lies at the manager's door. That he's that he's in, in, I'm not going to say he's incompetent, but it he, he's incapable of, of of maybe seeing his own flaws and failures that, that he, and he can't. He's not prepared to change. And, and ultimately, that will cost him his job. I saw another stat by Martin Lawrence on Twitter. Villa have played six of the remaining seven teams in the bottom eight of the Premier League this season. They've picked up four points from those six games. Their last five wins from 21 have come versus teams outside of the top 11 at the time. Um, their, co- their next six are all versus teams in the top 11. So that's they're they're pretty damning stats in the in their own right, aren't they? So I mean, very very damning. They're all still here, and I think I I really I can't see him going anytime soon. I said I said I thought that if we hadn't improved by the World Cup, that that they would probably dip, pull the trigger. I, I, I want to stand by that statement because I still think that's the most likely outcome. I think the only thing that would change that is now is the obvious, the um, the intensifying of, of the fans' discontent, which is never a good thing for a manager. And once it gets to a certain level, it becomes untenable and I think that the owners have to act. And, and we are one or two games now away from that. You know, a poor, poor result on Sunday, you could see really... You know, those few, I think we were trying to work out early when I spoke to you about how many fans were, were shouting, we want Gerard out after the game. I think there's about, was it about 3,000 that went last night? Two and a half, 3,000. And we reckon 70 to maybe 80 people were shouting, we want Gerard out. You know, a two, three or four lost, nil lost uh, defeat on Sunday and you, that'll turn into thousands, you know, because it yeah. doesn't take much to start, yeah. to start, you know, that, that chanting going. Yeah, um, I, I think... I think Sunday, I think there'll be a big chance of that if if we, we play really poorly. So, you know, another little gripe that I've sort of got at the minute is like Den Donker. Not, not getting a sniff, really. Coming on in games, what, to just shore us up a little bit? Like, yeah, I mean, that, spent I... X amount of money on him. Sanson still can't get a look in. Absolutely cannot get a look in. I don't even know why he comes out at half time trying to warm up because mate, you got no chance coming on that pitch. No. The camber was there last night. You know, when we were down when, to the bare when bones, came, weren't we? When he came in, when he came in, he was playing the camber a lot though, wasn't he? McCambo was great in his first. I think McCambo was his best player, wasn't it? The first ten games, he was getting a lot out of him. But but I think that was his. Looking like the best period he had, he had at the club. That those first few games, he, there was a definite improvement. The the old new manager bounce worked a treat, and from then on, it's been all downhill, really, hasn't it? It's been pretty dire stuff. You know, the Dendonka substitution. I didn't really understand last night. I know he's down to the bare bones. I was looking at half time, thinking who's on the bench that can change it. There was really Ings and, and Archer, wasn't there? I suppose attacking wise. And I thought Archie had a bit of I did have an impact coming on. He looked hungry, he looked lively, he looked like he was he want you know, that's the attitude I think a lot of them have lost because they're just so beaten down by what's happening and the way the manager's gone about things. And I think this is a telling point as well, to be fair, because you know, I do like a bit of psychology. And you know, the way I look at it as well is sometimes that whenever we win, I look at it and I always sort of go like, oh, we must be buzzing for the next game. You know, confidence will be booming. We'll be, it'll be, you know, we'll do really well. And then next game, we're really poor and it's, and it's flat. And I'm, and I look back and I'm just like, how could, how could we not be confident playing like whatever we played like the game before? You know, you know, if you think about it, if you think about it, we, we were three games on beat and going into that game yesterday. 
So confidence really shouldn't be on the floor, should it? It shouldn't. No. We shouldn't be like devoid of any confidence. But when I watch us, we look like we're getting hammered every week. Yeah, you know the players. There's not a smile. Look like on the table, they're not don't happy. We, yeah. You know that they're, they're not. I don't know. What, uh, that's the vibe I get. There's not. It's not a happy camp. And well, there's, I know there's we had a lot. Sweet. We had, sorry, we had a lot of that chat, didn't we, at the start after the Ming Sing, and everyone was saying like. They don't, no one believe. no one likes him, no one wants to be him. And I do think there is some it because we just look like we're not happy and there's not a good vibe, is what I'm trying to say there. And I oh, think there's I, not that camaraderie. Yeah, totally agree. I, I, I would agree. I think there's things that don't feel right. We, we're not privy to what goes on at the training ground and, 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 and you know, what how people actually feel about him. That might never come out, but. The things that he's done, the obvious one is the Mings McGinn captaincy decision. It seemed to cause a lot of friction within the squad. Tyrone wasn't very happy. Arguably, he's been our best player this season, so he, it hasn't shown on the pitch, which is all credit to him, really. That that he's gone out and gone. You know what? I, you know, I'm 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 going to show you that I am a top player and I'm top a top leader. And I don't think he has to wear the armband to be a leader. He's a leader, isn't he? We all know he's a leader. That it's definitely affected John McGinn. I feel really sorry for John McGinn. I met him on on the sleepover on Friday night, and he's a he's a top bloke. He's he's funny. He's articulate. He wants the best for the club. He couldn't wait to play on Monday. He was buzzing to play and wanting to win the game. And, and he's he's I don't want to say he's been thrown under the bus by by Gerard by being given the captaincy because that sounds ridiculous but I think by by being given the captaincy it's caused maybe friction within the camp and 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 you know he wants to his his natural persona is to, is to please and to be to 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 be trying to do everything he runs around like a you know tries to tackle everyone he tries to do everything and then he got took off last night and, I, and one thing I don't like to hear is fans you know sarcastically clapping and almost you know cheering that he's going off the pitch. That's our club captain, that is. Whatever you think of him, that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't help the team. That doesn't help us pick a point up or try and win the game. You know, there's time and a place for it, and, and that wasn't for me. And, and, you know, he's got to deal with this now, and he knows the fans are not massively on his side at the moment, which is a shame. Uh, and there's issues up front. You know, Ollie Watkins has been overplayed again. You know, he should not have started that game last night. No. You know, he just should not. He's, he's, he's had chance after chance after chance, game after game after game. He's missed loads of chances. He's not in good form. You've got Danny Ings there that, that's waiting. You've got Cameron Archer that, that you know, if we'd have seen a 90-minute performance like the one we had for 10 minutes, oh, I think we probably would have won the game last night. And I think Archer would have scored because he looked far more lively than the two coming on. Ings comes on and we just don't play to strengths. And that's a manager's issue, isn't it? That's not his issue. That's you know he, he has a certain way of playing, and you have to play to his strengths to get the best out of him. And that's up to the managers to get the best out of, about out of him by using the players we've got. So none of it's happening. It just looks you know like you say behind the scenes we don't know. You know the the, the South American players all seem to 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 be bonding and getting on really well. You see a lot of it on Instagram and and all of their social media channels. But you don't see many of the, the the other players bonding and going out with them. They they all seem to be a closed unit. And I'm not saying they don't all get on, but they seem to be over there all sort of getting on and then all the other lads are over there. So is there a bit of disconnect there? But it all comes down from for me, from from your performances. If 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 you're winning all the time and things are good, everybody's happy. But you know, going on these runs and and, and the problems that we're seeing and looking like happening over the next few weeks it causes friction doesn't it and it's almost like it becomes a blame culture who we're going to blame and at the moment it's it's down to Gerard. I'm afraid I don't know whether we're going to go on to talk about Perslow after but you know he has to take accountability as well yeah no, he he will be in the firing line won't he but it, it, he'll do anything to 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 make sure that his neck's not on the line well, yeah, I mean, the owners are going to question him, aren't they? That they own the club, they've put him in 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 a position of power, basically to run the club for them. They've trusted his judgment on Stephen Gerrard, and it's not worked. If anything, we look worse than we did when he when he fired uh, Dean Smith, didn't he? And, and I watched a press conference. The I watched the press conference actually when Stephen Gerrard. 
and uh, there was a clip on it. I don't know whether you can hear this actually. But what we expect and what Stephen has promised to deliver is continuous improvement in our team, and I'm certain he'll do that. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's well, promised to. We're still, he's promised. We're still waiting. This is it. They fired <laughs> D- Dean Smith on the, you know. Because of continue, he argued continuous improvement. And to be fair to, to Christian Perslow at the, at the trust meeting I went to last week, he said they will not be swayed by individual games and losses, which is right. You can't you can't have a knee jerk reaction to one loss or a couple of losses. You've got to take it over a longer period of time, and that's his job to do that. So we've had twelve months now. We haven't had a, a, a month. We haven't had ten games. We've had twelve months, and we currently are no better off than when we decided to fire Dean Smith. So if you're saying it's right to fire Dean Smith at that point, surely you've got to say to to, to Stephen Gerrard that, you know, you're on thin ice now because we hired you for a continuous improvement. You promised us continuous improvement. You haven't delivered that. So based on that, you, you know, you're in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Definitely. So, so, so frustrating, isn't it, Justin? It's such a shame. It is such a shame because we we started the season in such high spirits, like we always do, and and it's it's you know it's been a bit of a disaster, really, if you think about it, with the fixtures we've had. We've we've just not hit the ground running at all. Um, I hope it doesn't get mega toxic. I really hope that doesn't happen because. I think as a fan base, we can vent our frustration. And if we lose on Sunday, I'm sure the boos will, will ring around Villa Park and the Gerard out chance more than likely will, will be louder and louder. But I don't think we should resort to, to the vile you know, stuff that, that happens when that happens. You know, I think we can rise above that. I think we can put our point over. I think the owners will hear it loud and clear um, and they will make the decision, I would hope and think, pretty soon if things don't improve and I can't see them improving my own opinion I, I, I can't, I've backed Stephen Gerrard I've overly backed him I think at times I think I've, I've, I've been more than fair and I've, I've tried to stick up for him within certain groups I'm, I'm, I'm in the chats with and I'm trying to think that yes he can turn it around, you just need that win we just need that positive performance but I can't, I can't lie, I can't Sit here and say it's it's good. It's not. It's not good. It's poor. It's and 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 you know with everything that's going on in the country at the moment and with what we're facing over Christmas and the government, you know, all that crap that goes on. All you want to do is go down the football on a Saturday and, and have a really nice hour and a half watching your team play nice football. Even if you lose, if you play well and you're entertaining, you see your mates, you have a drink, you go home, great. But it's not that, is it? It's People, I, I've heard people within some of my group saying that you know they don't want to go, they're going to stop going because it's just it's horrible, it's horrible to watch. It's not it's not entertaining, it's not enjoyable. That's what it should be, isn't it? That's what it is. It's it's a, it's a release. So I think something's going to give, and I think it'll give pretty soon. Cool, right? Hope you've enjoyed our little double double upload today. Uh, we'll be back later on in the week. I'm just gonna try and finish this this last bit of this book. Might find that um, uh, moment of magic. Might be might be in the last couple of uh, paragraphs. But um, yeah, up the villa. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel and uh, speak to you all soon. Up the villa. Keep the faith.